okay, so um, I was asked to make a video on junior cert higher level functions. So I'm just going to do a quick video here showing a few exam questions. Um, this one's from the 2015 paper. Uh, the next one here is also from the 2015 paper. And then the last one here is from the 2014 paper. So it's a bit of a variety of different questions that you can be asked uh, in your exam. So I'll just work through these and talk through them as I go. So let fx equals 3x plus 5. x is an element of or. This means it's a real number. So it can have any value. So it can be a whole number, it can be a fraction, it can be a decimal, it can be positive, it can be negative, it can have pretty much any value. Find the value of f of 7. So what that means, f of 7, that means we have to substitute in 7 into this here. So instead of writing f of x, we'll write f of 7. And anywhere we have x, We'll substitute it with 7. So I have 3x, so instead of 3x, I have 3 times 7. And plus 5. So I have 3 times 7 plus 5. I have to find the value of this. So that's equal to 3 times 7 is 21 plus 5. 21 plus 5 is 26. So that's our final answer there in this question. Find the value of f of 7. The f of 7 is equal to 26. Okay, write f of k in terms of k. Now, students tend to get a bit confused when we start bringing in uh, extra letters in here, but just treat it the same way we treated that 7 there. So just sub in k instead of x. So the f of k is equal to 3k, now instead of x, plus 5. And that's all we can actually do here because it says write it in terms of k. That's it there. In terms of k just means it has a k in it. Okay, now in the next part, we're actually going to do a little bit more with this. Using your answer to part b or otherwise, find the value of k for which the f of k is equal to k. So here's the f of k. 3k plus 5. The f of k. Now we want to say that it's equal to k. So f of k is equal to k. And now we can see what we have here. We have a simple linear equation that we can solve. Let's get the k's to one side, the numbers to the other side. So what I'm going to do is subtract k from both sides. That will give me on the left 2k. And I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So on the right, that will give me minus 5. So 2k is equal to minus 5. I divide both sides by 2. And that gives me k is equal to minus 5 over 2. You can leave it as that minus 5 over 2. Or you can say that's equal to minus 2.5 or 2.5. It doesn't matter what way you write it there. Okay, so this one, uh, 2015, paper 1, question 13. The graph of the linear function y equal fx is drawn on the coordinate grid below. There it is, y equal fx. It's a straight line. Using the same axis, draw the graph of each of the following functions where x is greater than or equal to minus 6 and less than or equal to 6, and it's an element of 4. What this means is it's between minus 6 and plus 6, and what this means is, again, it's a real number. So in terms of drawing a graph, we're going to draw a solid line for real numbers. Label each graph clearly. We have to draw y equal to fx plus 2 and y equal to minus fx. Okay, so for the first one, y equal to fx plus 2. What this means is basically every point on the graph is going to have 2 added onto it. So let's take a few simple ones. If I have this point here and the y value is 1, if I add 2 onto it, it's going to bring it up to here, up to 3. 
if I have this point here where the y value is 0, if I add 2 onto that, that brings it up by 2 to there. If I have this point here where y is equal to minus 1, if I add 2 onto it, brings it up to plus 1. This point here, minus 2, comes up to 0. This point here, 2, moves up to 4. Next one is 3, and that moves up to 5. So you can see all these lines here actually make, or uh, sorry, all these dots here actually make a straight line. And I can join them up to draw my graph. So that there is y equals f of x plus 2. So we've just added 2 onto every single value. Now for the second one, y equals minus fx. Okay, what does this mean? y equals minus fx. What it means is whatever the value is, the y value that is, whatever it is, we take the minus value of that. So, for example, let's start at 1 again. The minus value of 1 is minus 1. Let's work this way first. The minus value of 2 is minus 2. The minus value of 3 is minus 3. I'll come to this one in a second. This is minus 1. The minus value of minus 1 is plus 1. This is minus 2. The minus value of minus 2 is plus 2, which is up here. Now this one in the middle, I left this to last because the y value here is 0. The opposite of 0 or the minus value of 0 is just 0. So we get a straight line going like this. And I can draw my line in like that and label it clearly. That's y equals minus f of x. So if you add a constant or a number onto a graph, y equal to fx, that will move it up. If you were to subtract it, that would move it down. If you are to multiply it by a negative, then that's going to change uh, the orientation or change the slope of the line. Okay, and the last question that I'm going to take a look at today is from the 2014 paper. It's question 10. The graphs of the functions f of x equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3 and g of x is equal to minus x squared minus 2x plus 3 are shown below. Identify each graph by writing fx or gx in the space provided. So that's this one and this one. One of these is fx, one of these is gx. So how do we know? Okay, so if we're looking at these, we notice that a lot of the things are the same. They cross the x-axis at the same point, minus 3 and 1, both of them do. But this one is a u-shaped graph, this one is an n-shaped graph. And hopefully you remember that to get a u-shaped graph or an n-shaped graph, the only thing we need to worry about is the x-square term. And in fact, the only thing we need to worry about is whether or not it's positive or whether it's negative. So if it's positive, that's going to give us a U-shaped graph. If it's negative, that's going to give us an N-shaped graph. So that means fx has a positive x squared. So this is fx. gx has a negative x squared. So this is gx. Okay, moving on to this one. The graphs of the functions y equal to hx and y equal to kx are shown below. Here they are. Write down the roots of each function. Now, the roots of the function are where it crosses the x-axis. So that's this point here and this point here. This point is minus 2, this point is 3. We're only worried about the x value on this, 
the y value is always zero at the roots. So the roots of hx are minus two and three. In kx, it's minus three and two. kx, x equals minus three and two. Now, for the second part, hence or otherwise, write down an equation for each function. Now, an equation is it's going to be a quadratic equation because these are quadratic curves. We have the roots. So if you have the roots and you were to work backwards, you know when we usually solve a quadratic equation, we'll factorize it and then find the roots. Right now we have the roots, so we need to find the factors. So we use something called the factor theorem. If you click this link here, that'll bring you to a video on the, on the factor theorem and it'll explain it in more detail. But for now, if you have a root of minus two, then a factor is gonna be x plus two. If you have a root of three, a factor is gonna be x minus three. So you put the x in and you put the opposite sign. Then to get the equation, all we need to do is multiply out these brackets. x by x is x squared. x by minus three, minus three x. Two by x is two x. Two by minus three is minus six. We can simp simplify this a bit further. Minus three x plus two x is minus x. So it's x squared minus x minus six. For this one, we're gonna do the same thing. So the factors now this time are x plus three and x minus two. Let's multiply it out. x by x is x squared. x by minus two minus two x. Three by x plus three x. 3 by minus 2 minus 6. We can add these ones together. 3x minus 2x is x. We're left with x squared plus x minus 6. So you can see we get something very similar for each one, but the difference is this x and minus x in the middle. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. If anybody has any other videos that they'd like to request, just ask in the comments below and I'll see how, um, I'll just try my best to, to get them done as soon as possible. Okay, thanks. See you next time.